Hello, algebra students, and here is the video. It's mainly for seventh and eighth period. Hear that, Dylan? This is for you. Uh, Kaylee, are you listening? Uh, Madison, I listen to some of your questions, but of course it'll be posted on YouTube so um, everybody can watch it. But let's get down to it. I had a few people send me some questions, and so the first couple problems I'm going to go through. Uh, some from the homework. So this is number three. I can't remember exactly who asked about number three. I mean, Madison sent some questions. Maddie, Sorrell sent me some. Justine did. Uh, one or two other people sent me questions about it. So I have to write uh, a function here. And so I'm going to make my table first of all. And there's x and there's f of x. And I've got one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to look for the nth term, right? Now remember, the first thing I do uh, when I'm writing a function from a series of numbers or a sequence of numbers is I look for the first differences. And I think that's going to be, what, 17? No, that's going to be a plain old 7. Sorry. Positive 7. And this is going to be 9 and then 11. Now, had these all matched, it would have been a linear function, and I would have taken whatever number it was, like they were all plus 5, I would have gone 5n. But seeing as how they don't match, I'll go down to the second differences. In this case, it's all plus 2. Since the second differences all are constant, they're all the same number, that means this is quadratic. Now, it's very important. I need to take my n squared, but the coefficient has to be half of this number. Some of you are forgetting to do that. And this problem, if you just write n squared, it doesn't matter. But and other ones it will. So I'm going to write a 1n squared there just in case you're having trouble with that. Now, I do my comparison line, right? So I put 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if I'm Dan Michael, I put 1 times 1 squared. And then I put 1 times 2 squared. And then 1 times 3 squared. And then 1 times 4 squared and 1 times 5 squared. And then I get those answers, I write them on these blanks, and I see how closely they resemble the f of x line. So 1 squared times 1 is 1, 2 squared is 4, times 1 is 4, and then 3 squared is 9, and then 4 squared is 16, and then 5 squared is 25. So now, let's see here, it looks like this is off by plus 2, this is off by plus 4, this is off by 6, this is off by 8, and this is off by 10. So, I'm not sure what to do here. Actually, I do know I recognize this 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 pattern, but when you don't recognize it, you take those numbers and you make a new table. And so, I'll do x, and maybe I'll call it g of x. I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I only call it g of x because it's a, a new number or a new function. I know that my, my function that I'm going to write in my final answer will have a 1n squared in it, but it's also going to have a linear component, and that's what I'm going to find out with this 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I go down here to the first differences, and that's plus 2, plus 2. Oh, they're all plus 2. So this part of the function is linear. And I take this number and I multiply by n. So I'm going to have a 2n. And then I put my little spaces. And I do 2 times 1, and 2 times 2, and 2 times 3. Okay. And so I'm going to get 2 and 4 and 6 and 8 and then 10. And look, they match perfectly, don't they? So here's my function. My function is going to be f of x. And it's going to be the 1n squared that I had from the first part. And then I got a positive 2n there, so I'm going to add that on to the end. If it had been negative 2n, uh, I would have put a minus. Now, actually, I should be using x squared. Sorry about that, because it's f of x. Now, what kind of function is this? Well, it's quadratic. How do I know it's quadratic? Because 
the highest exponent is 2. Right? Okay, that was problem number 3. Hope that helps you out. Here's problem number 5. Tell you what, I want you to go ahead and uh, pause the video when I say pause and uh, make your table and then see what uh, if you can figure out what to do from there and then I'll explain it. So uh, go ahead and pause the video now. If you're still watching, I assume that means you are ready to test what's going to happen here. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and n. And so I go looking for my first differences, and it looks like a plus 15. And I think that's going to be a 25, yeah. And that's going to be a 35. And that's going to be 45. If you weren't sure, you could subtract 83 from 128. You will get 45. It's definitely not linear, so I go down to second differences. Hopefully you got that all your second differences were plus 10. Okay, now, are you able to tell me what the uh, uh, nth term is going to look like? Well, here's what it is. I'm going to have an n squared because the second differences are all the same, but I need half of this number for the coefficient. So it's going to be a 5n squared. So when I put those under here, I'm going to have 5 times 1 squared. Now you've got to be careful. You must do the order of operations. So many of you still seem like to refuse to learn how to do the order of operations. Please just learn it. Come in for extra practice on it. Ask questions in class. Okay, quit assuming you know it. You don't. So many of you do it wrong and you just want to argue that you're right. And I don't get that. I don't know why you would continue to do that. All right, so here we go. Order of operations. One squared is 1 times 5 is 5. Exponents before multiplication. 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20. 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45. 16 times 5, I believe, is 80. And this will be 25 times 5, which is 125. And then when I compare up, it looks like the green ones are all 3 less than they need to be. The black ones are 3 more. So to make them equal, I'll add 3. So therefore, the nth term will be 5n squared plus 3. My function, g of x, will be 5x squared plus 3. This is also quadratic. Okay. If I was going to figure out, say, g of, I don't know, 10, I would plug 10 in. I must follow the order of operations. This is not 50 squared. This is 10 squared, which is 100. And then 5 times 100 is 500 plus 3, and that equals 503. That's the 10th term in this sequence. Okay, let's move on here. Uh, problem number 6 is going to end up being cubic. I'll go through this one real quick. Looking for that nth term, finding the first difference is I get 7, I get plus uh, 19, plus 37, and plus a 61. They don't match. I go looking for the second differences. I go plus 12, plus 18, and plus 24. Go down to the third level. I get plus 6, plus 6. They're starting to repeat. I'm on the third level. This is going to be an n cubed. Now, remember, I've said in class that I suspect that you use one-sixth of this number. I haven't actually explored it, but you're not going to need to worry about it. We'll just, we'll just have ones that turn out to be a plain old n cubed. Um, just in the interest of time. And so now I'm going to cube all of my numbers, my 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and compare them to the h of x line. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, and 5 cubed is 125. And look at that, they're all 3 short of where they need to be. 
So I add three on the first one, I add three on the second one, I add three on the third one. What am I gonna do on the nth one? I'm gonna add three. So the nth term is gonna be n cubed plus three. This is a cubic function, and the actual function will look like h of x equals x cubed plus three. All right, that's number six. Oops. Okay, there's number nine. Now, some of you specifically asked, how do we get a variable for an exponent? And nine and 10, I believe, are gonna do this for us. So let's make our little table here. Um, there's no particular reason I change colors. I just must have forgot I was still in red. Okay, I'm gonna go x and we'll go f of x. Okay, and this will be the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, and then the nth term. All right, so we'll go down here and we'll get plus two and plus four and plus eight and plus 16. Now, if I keep finding differences since they don't match, all that's gonna happen is I'm just gonna keep getting two, four, and eight, and then two and four, and it's never gonna settle down to the same number. But I notice that I can turn two into four by multiplying by two. I can do four times two and get eight, eight times two and get 16. When it's being multiplied, when the, either the f of x terms are being multiplied or the differences are being multiplied, it's an exponential function. And I'm gonna take this number two, what it's being multiplied by, and I'm gonna raise it to the nth power. Okay, I still do my comparison line. And so when I do that, I get two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth, and two to the fifth. All right, so two to the first is two, two to the second is four, two to the third is eight, two to the fourth is 16, and two to the fifth is 32. Comparing up, I notice that my green line is all four short of the black line. Yeah. So therefore, if my nth term is two to the power n, I need to add four to it to make it match those. So my actual function is gonna be f of x equals two to the power x plus four. Now let's say I wanna figure out uh, f of, I don't know, let's go eight, I don't wanna go too big. Two to the power eight plus four. Well, two to the eighth is 256, I believe. You can verify that, plus four, it's gonna be 260. Okay, that's the f of eight. All right, this one is very similar. I'd like you to pause the video and try it on your own. When you're ready, go ahead and unpause the video. If you're watching at this point, I'm assuming you've spent a few minutes as a class trying to figure this out. If you've done it already on your homework, that's wonderful. And then, and by the way, it doesn't matter what variable I use there, h of x, g of x, f of x, right? So if you used f of x and I have h of x, it's not wrong. So I go finding my first difference, so I got plus seven and then plus 19 and then plus 45, that's a big jump. And then plus, um, let's see here, 248 minus 85, that's 85, sorry. It's gonna end in a three, 1663, I believe. So this is gonna be plus 12. This is going to, oh no, this isn't 45, this one's 55. By the way, you gotta watch that. Check yourself on a calculator. If you make a silly mistake like that, it screws up the whole pattern. You won't be able to get the right answer. All right, the difference there, if that were 20, it would be 35, so it must be 36. And you know what I noticed right off the bat that 12 times three is 36. I wonder if the difference I get here will be 36 times three. Let's find out. 163 minus 55. I'm gonna do a little borrow in. 13 minus five is eight, 10. There we go, it is, it's 108. So this difference here is plus 108 and 36 times three is 108. 
since the differences are being multiplied, this is also exponential. Exponential. Anytime the differences are being multiplied. Exponential. So I'm going to take that 3 and I'm going to raise it to the power n. And then I'm going to uh, put comparison lines down. And I'm going to raise 3 to the 1st and 3 to the 2nd and 3 to the 3rd, 3 to the 4th, and 3 to the 5th. Okay, 3 to the 1st is 3, then 9, then 27, then uh, 81. Doesn't really look like an 81, sorry. I'm going to write that 27 over just in case you're in the back of the room and you think that looks kind of strange. And then 243. Now, how uh, do they compare up? Well, that's going to be plus 1, and that's going to be plus 2, and that's plus 3, and that's plus 4, and that's plus 5. So you could make a second table, or you could notice that on the first one you added 1, on the second one you added 2, the third one you added 3, on the fourth one you add 4, on the fifth one you add 5, on the 13th one you're going to add 13, on the 99th one you're going to add 99, so on the nth one I'm going to add n. Yeah, so my function is going to be h of x, and that's going to equal 3 to the power x plus x. Let's go ahead and find h of, I don't know, 6. I don't want to go too big here. All right, see how that works? I do the order of operations. Uh, 3 to the 6, I don't know off the top of my head. I want to say 729. That sound right, 3 to 6, or is that too small? Oh, hit the wrong button there, sorry. Checking out my calculator here. Oh yeah, 729, that was right. Okay, so now I have 729 plus 6, which will end up equaling 735. There you go. It's pretty simple stuff. Now, nobody asked about the arithmetic and geometric sequences, so I thought I'd do two real quick here. In fact, I'd love for you to try them. Pause the video, give them a shot. Okay, if you're still watching, well, there's problem A. We'll do problem A first, and there's problem B. But I gave you the equations right there, so go ahead and pause the video if you haven't yet. All right. On this one, I notice I'm dividing by 2, and then I divide by 2, and I divide by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. This is a geometric sequence where R is one half. I always use what it's multiplied by. So I'm going to take my geometric equation, which is a sub n, and that's going to equal uh, a sub 1 times r raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so a sub 6 is equal, I got a sub 6 from there, a sub 1 is 20 times r, which is 1 half, and then it'll be raised to the fifth power. Be very careful here, please. Please do the order of operations correctly. We must do the exponent before the multiplication. So a to the sixth is going to equal 20 over 1 times 1 over 2 to the fifth, or 32. Now 20 over 32, Wonder Woman could show up and divide by 4, and divide by 4 there, and I'm going to get five-eighths, and that's what a to the sixth is going to equal, five-eighths. Now, just a quick note, if I had told you, you know, like, a to the sixth equals five-eighths, and I wanted you to figure out a sub one, you know, where r is one-half, you would set the problem up just a little bit differently. You would go a sub n equals a sub one, times r to the power n minus 1. Now, I've told you a sub 6 is what? 5 eighths, did I say? So I'm going to put a 5 eighths right here. Okay, I don't know a sub 1. It's my variable. r is 1 half still. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, mistake some of you are making here n is 6, not 5 a's. a sub n is 5 a's, but n is 6. See the 6 sitting in n position? So I do 6 minus 1. Okay, and this problem here, 
I get 5 a's to go a sub 1, and that will be to the fifth power, so that will be times 1 over 32. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 1 over 32. And remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to use the reciprocal of 1 over 32, which is going to be 32 over 1. And then I'm going to let Wonder Woman do her thing. And I'll go in there once, go in there four times. 5 times 4 will be 20. So if this was the problem, a sub 1 would be 20. Well, look, a sub 1 was 20, wasn't it? So I was just trying to draw attention to how to do that problem correctly. Some of you on your video quizzes were messing that part up. All right, this one here. I have to see how to change 12 into 9. I can think of one way to do it by multiplying, but I can also think by subtracting 3. And 9 minus 3 is 6, and 6 minus. So this must be an arithmetic because they're changing by either addition or subtraction, in this case, subtraction. D is going to equal negative 3. So I've got to find a sub 14. So I'm going to do a sub 14. That's going to equal a sub 1 plus D, which is times quantity of n minus 1. This is not an exponent. The arithmetic sequence does not have an exponent in it other than 1. The first term is 12. And then I'm going to have minus 3 because D was negative 3. And then I'm going to multiply by 14 minus 1, which of course is 13. Here, order of operations. Are you listening? It is not 12 minus 3. It's 12 minus 39. Where did I get 39 from? 3 times 13. And let's see, 39 minus 12 is 27. So 12 minus 39 must be a negative 27. And so a sub 14 would equal negative 27. All right, that's it for the video. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.